Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and thanks to those of you that have just subscribed. If you haven't and you've only just stumbled on the channel, why not do it now? This is the second part of a two-part series looking at cutting access cavities in teeth with very sclerosed root canals where there's a risk of perforation during the access cavity preparation. Last time we looked at central incisor teeth with sclerosed root canals and this time we're moving on to molar teeth where the pulp space has become completely occluded. Obviously in this situation there's a risk that you could perforate the pulp floor during access cavity preparation. I'll show you how I assess the case before treatment and then how I go on to cut the access cavity safely. I hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoperative radiograph of the mandibular right first molar. The tooth is associated with peripical periodontitis and had been symptomatic. The preoperative radiograph gives us loads of information about the tooth before we start root canal treatment, and in this case it wasn't necessary to expose a CBCT. You can see the restoration is well adapted to the tooth. Below this, the pulp chamber has significant calcification. This calcification will need to be removed in order to gain access to the root canals during root canal treatment. There's a mesial pulp horn visible on the radiograph and as the highest point of the pulp chamber, this is the direction in which I'm gonna head when I cut the access cavity. I'm going to use the buccal amalgam as a handy reference point to locate the direction in which I need to drill. The root canals are highly sclerosed and curved, so I'll be using lots of patency filing and copious irrigation to make sure that I don't block them during preparation. So the buccal amalgam is gonna be a very handy marker to locate the position of the access cavity and the direction towards the pulp horn. Measured on the digital radiograph, we can see that it's 6.5 millimeters. Here we are clinically, and you can see the buccal amalgam. I'm starting my access cavity preparation in line with this, and I'm always keeping it in mind as I head towards the pulp horn. I'm now using a large LN burr to perforate the pulp chamber and I'm measuring it against that amalgam that I saw on the radiograph. The pulp chamber had lots of dystrophic calcification in it and I'm going to remove this using an ultrasonic tip, the Startex 3.
Here I'm exploring the floor of the pulp chamber with an endoprobe to see if I can dislodge any further calcifications. The pulp floor is still covered in calcific material and so I'm going to use the ultrasonic tip again just to clear this away. We're now looking into the access cavity under high microscopic magnification and we can see the mesial canal orifices reflected in the mirror and the distal canal orifices with direct vision. The next bit showing length estimation and preparation has been speeded up. In a case like this, where the canals are quite sclerosed, it's important to use plenty of irrigant and keep going back with a small hand file to confirm patency. Here I'm combining the cone fit with some GP pumping. GP pumping is a very effective way of agitating the irrigant in the root canals when they've been prepared. The four canals have been dried before obturation with a vertically compacted gutter perker technique. I'm pleased with the final result, which shows a good coronal apical seal. There's been a little bit of extrusion of sealer apically, but this will be absorbed in time. The first review will be done in about one year. On to case two now, and this is a maxillary first molar with very long roots and calcification in the pulp chamber. The preoperative radiograph shows the maxillary right first molar. The tooth is restored with an amalgam and has calcification in the pulp chamber. A CBCT clearly shows periapical radiolucency. The tooth is going to need root canal treatment. Under the microscope you can see that I've isolated the tooth with rubber dam and this is the amalgam restoration. In this case I actually treated the maxillary right first molar and second premolar simultaneously. Similar to the last case there's reactive dentine in the pulp chamber and the root canals are sclerosed. I'm looking for a reference point that I can use to direct me in the direction of the pulp chamber when I'm making my access cavity. In this case, I'm going to use a point between the mesial buccal cusp tip and the mid buccal groove. Of course, there's another way to make things a lot easier, and that's to remove the entire restoration, and that's exactly what I did in the first molar. So here I am removing the amalgam restoration with a diamond burr. At the base of the cavity, you can see a liner that was placed under the amalgam. I've now used a long tapered diamond burr to penetrate the pulp chamber using that reference point, and you can see bleeding from the inflamed pulp underneath. It's then a relatively simple matter to remove the roof of the pulp chamber using a non end cutting burr such as the Endo Z. This is indeed a very poorly pulp and I can lift pulp tissue out using an endoprobe.
I went on to locate the four root canals in the tooth. I established the working length using an electronic apex locator, then created a glide path with a size 10 hand file. The canals were rapidly tapered using Wave 1 gold instruments and then irrigated with 3% sodium hypochlorite. This sequence has been speeded up. A cone fit radiograph was exposed prior to obturation using a bioceramic cement and single cone technique. The access cavity was sealed using a dual cure composite and the Paladent matrix system. The final radiograph shows excellent coronal apical seal in these very long root canals. In the final case we're going to be looking at another mandibular molar. In this case it's a tooth where the pulp floor and roof are almost on top of each other. There's not much space there and we need to select a reference point that will allow me to penetrate that without risking perforation of the furcation. I can see a handy dip in the restoration on the radiograph that correlates nicely with the view when the tooth is isolated under the microscope. I'll start access cavity preparation in the centre of this dip using a long tapered diamond burr and a round burr and then I'll work progressively sideways until I've lifted off the roof of the pulp chamber. After preparation a comb fit radiograph was exposed. The canals have been dried prior to obturation and you can see that the access cavity outline is irregular but follows the pattern of the pulp floor. The final radiograph shows a good coronal apical seal. In this case the tooth was obturated using a vertically compacted gutta percha technique. The first review will be in one year. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's going to be many more cases in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.